Lesson number four for June the uh, 25th, 2023. It says the tale of two thieves. And we're talking about the power of forgiveness still. We're still dealing with forgiveness. And this, is, this lesson is, is very important in another aspect because last week they talked about the 70 times seven. If a person sinned against you many, many times, you still have to have a heart open to be willing to forgive them. But this week lesson is different because this week lesson don't just invoke forgiveness, it invokes repentance. See, and th there is no true forgiveness when we deal with God without repentance. And I said this, I think it was two weeks ago, I was saying that uh, we can't really come to God and be forgiven unless we're willing to confess to, confess to God that we are wrong, that we are sinful. And this lesson deals with uh, a thief that was on the cross with Jesus that at the end of his life believed Jesus and a thief that was on the cross, not with Jesus, but next to Jesus. And then a thief that was on the cross next to Jesus at the end of his life didn't believe. It, 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 deals, with, it deals with the contrast of the believer versus the unbeliever. And the lesson is called the tale of two thieves. It can I say this? It leaves Jesus out of the equation. <laughs> In a sense. That's the title does. It, the title is not dealing with Jesus per se. The title is dealing with the two people that's being crucified next to Jesus. And their response to him and him dying. And then their response to them and their lives, the lives they lived. And then they're willing to, one willing to accept responsibility and accountability for what he did in his life. And the other one unwilling to accept responsibility and accountability for what he did in his life. And he wants to be let off. Help me, Holy Ghost. The tale of two thieves. And, and this was one of the final temptations that Jesus felt on the cross as he was being crucified. Because even when he's on the cross, the temptation was, well, you the son of man, you the son of God. Come down off the cross and save yourself. And, and not only were these two thieves saying it, but those that had crucified him that were around the cross were saying the same thing. They were saying he saved others. If he was, if he the son of God, he could come down and save himself. They were saying the same. So, even at the very end of his life, they were trying to tempt Jesus to go against the will by which he was sent, which was to come and die for our sinfulness. They were trying to tempt him to not die. And then Jesus understood the principle that was laid down by the Father, which says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. So on the cross, remember now, this one thief, he repented. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. In other words, you still gonna die for your crime. He was still executed. Let's don't, let's don't make no mistake about it. He was still executed. Cause sometimes people say, well, I'm saved now. My past don't matter. Well, let me say this, there is a scripture that talks about God will cast our sins in a sea of forgetfulness. Okay? But there is a principle that God has laid down of sowing and reaping. That principle is going to hold fast. That sowing and reaping principle is going to hold fast. It's, it's not going to change. Back then it was capital punishment, which is what we call it today. But he still was executed even though he asked for forgiveness. He repented. Giving our life to God does not mean that we're absolved of our past. God is not looking at our actions as much as he's looking at the heart by which we do what we do. The intent. 
I went to a I went to a, a home going service of a friend a few years ago, and the preacher preached this message and stayed with me. He said, "I know why he did what he did, but he asked the question, why do you do what you do?" And it goes back to the intent, the heart, the purpose behind what we're doing. It's, it, it's not so much the actions. The actions are a reflection of what's on the heart or in the heart. I'm convinced that how I dress and how I look is based on what's in me, in my heart. Amen. How I want to appear in front of people is based on what's in my heart. How I respond to people, how I react to people is based on what's in my heart. The kind of energy I put out when I'm dealing with people is based on what's in my heart. Look what the humble thief did. He admitted his own guilt and turned to Jesus for mercy. Forgiveness, I, I dealt with that uh, two weeks ago, or maybe the first lesson I dealt with forgiveness being mercy, grace, leniency. Remember I gave the definition of forgiveness? Mercy, grace, leniency, you know, uh, pardon, to excuse. Some people are offended that a thief could be with Jesus after only praying near the end of his life. And we gotta be careful that. Why do we feel like people need to earn their right to be saved? Listen, one thing people won't do, they won't fool God. If a person is not truly repenting, they, they but, but if a person is truly repenting, God say the grace go to them as well as to you. They just live their life, they live a bitter, hateful life. They life went all across, they lived a long time, but their life went all the way cracked up to be. We think, here I go, we think that because these people lived this certain way on earth, that, that they they going we used to, and, I, and I'm gonna tell you, I used to be big on it. We're gonna bust hell wide open. I, I don't say that no more. I don't say that no more. Because I'm understanding that Jesus came to save people. And not now some people listen. Their life will condemn them. I don't need to condemn you. Uh, if a person don't get Jesus in their life, they're going to be condemned. That's on them. But at the same time, if they get Jesus at the end of their life, they're going to be saved. And guess what? I don't have an opinion. God didn't ask me what I thought about it. <laughs> and I don't need to chime in. Yeah, but see, that's why it's good to come in and get teaching, Amen. so we can get a get out all I get and get understanding. Amen. Amen. So we can grow and we can see things how God sees things, and not how even we've been taught or what we thought was. And we learn, you know, I'm saying since we've been doing this church here, I've learned so much about God and about me and about what God wants for me. And I heard Bishop Jay say this years ago. He said, if you think you know it, keep on living. Because I'm saved because of the mercy of Christ. Why come this thief couldn't be saved because of the mercy of Christ? <laughs> 